So, Max, we are your friends. What does this title mean? Um, for a long time, the movie was called The Untitled DJ Project. Um, and that's how, oh. yeah, not the most dynamic title. And people would read it, read it and, and say, you know, this feels more than just like a DJ story or it feels more just like an EDM story. And so, but we never came up with a good title. We tried all like the puns, like the spinning or, you know, pr play pause and all these kind of DJ turntable oriented puns, but they all seemed kind of shallow compared to what the, the film was. And so I, you know, I was like, oh, maybe a song title would do it. And so I went through my iTunes library and I just like the first thing I saw was We Are Your Friends by Justice, which was like my favorite song for a long time. And it was also, it's like 10 years old and it was kind of the first big electronic anthem crossover that crossed over into pop culture. And it seemed fitting because the movie was about friendship and um, the community is about friendship and, and, it, and it brought up the idea of relationships, which is kind of what the movie's about. So it seemed fitting in, in more than one way. So Zach, tell us a little bit about your character and where we find him and his friends at the beginning of the story. Um, it's, it's a classic sort of coming of age story, but it's, it's set to today. I think uh, Cole is living in the valley, just you know, um, out of reach of Hollywood. It's like very close to it, but somehow very far. And um, he's following his friends and sort of a little bit lost. And uh, you, he, he gains this mentor in, a, in a, a Wes Bentley's character, an older DJ, who sort of shows him how to properly produce music and to really listen to his, himself instead of listening to those around him. And um, that is when he sort of blossoms and takes control of his life. So it's pretty, I think that's it. I mean, well. Sophie is um, very similar to Cole's story, just it's, you know, her own version of it. But um, she definitely hasn't quite figured out who she is yet. Um, she's sort of in a very comfortable situation, but not really doing um, what she needs to to make herself really fulfilled and happy. And I think that her journey is sort of about maybe sacrifice and making the really tough, you know, decisions about what you need to do to figure out who you are. And why, why do you think that Sophie and Cole connect I mean, so well? I think because they're on the same journey in a lot of ways. It's, you know, they both haven't figured out what they want or who they are, and they're both comfortable. He has his friends, she has her boyfriend, um, and it's, they sort of help each other. They are, they're actually, their friendship's more than just romance. It's like a partnership on, and moving through and forward with their lives. Next, tell, uh, talk about why it was important to set the story in the San Fernando Valley. And Hollywood? Um, I had an experience somewhat like Cole's experience in the movie uh, so I was writing from a personal place and and that experience was in the valley and I think just like the way um, Staten Island f uh, functions in Saturday Night Fever which is it's it's just outside of Manhattan where kind of the the action is in the big city the valley is just on the other side of of Hollywood and Beverly Hills where the rich and famous live and congregate. The other great thing about the Valley is that we could get very specific about it. We could talk about the area code and uh, the sushi and all these things and it could still be um, a microcosm of America because a lot of America are, you know, is suburban like that and is full of strip malls and everyone has their lo the things that they're proud of locally and it was a great stand-in for, for just America and, and probably the world, or hopefully, yeah. in general. And so it could be, we could be specific and universal at the same time. Now, um, Zach, can you talk a little bit about training with um, James, or Jason, I'm sorry? Yeah, I got sort of a crash course on, on uh, DJing. And it all happened really quickly. Uh, th luckily, I had a great coach, Them Jeans, Jason Stewart. Um, uh, immediately, I just remember Max and him showing up at my front door and unloading brand new Pioneer decks with two massive monitor speakers, and um, and it was we were off and running, and uh, I was learning to transition tracks, add effects, um, just to set playlists, to load my USB, to 
I don't know, to really get good at anything, there's like that 10,000 hour rule. I think I probably did maybe a good 100 hours. <laughs> um, but I did know what I was doing by the end of the movie. Um, it does, however, disappear very, fairly quickly and after I've done a few films since and I've, my skills aren't at their best right now. <laughs> um, can you also, Max, talk about this incredible roster of musical artists involved in this? Yeah. Um, I was kind of like a kid in a candy store when it came to the soundtrack. Uh, we reached out to a lot of my favorite artists and I had already had a playlist um, prepared for the movie. A bunch of songs were already written into the script and um, I also had an amazing music supervisor, uh, Randy Poster, who has worked with Wes Anderson and Scorsese and Harmony Corinne and he was a great mentor in terms of I, I, I love music and I had a lot of songs I wanted to use and he really helped me figure out well you know which songs really help the telling of the story and art and, and add an emotional dimension to the story and not just our great music um, but we reached out to a lot of uh, artists and we got a bunch of unreleased tracks from them that we were able to use in, in great spots in the movie and then um, there were also some really obscure songs that not a lot of people knew that that I was really proud to be able to get into the film and I think you know the the most the, the collaboration I'm probably most proud of in regards to the music is with uh, Pyramid this young up-and-coming French DJ who's kind of the French real-life version of Cole in a lot of ways and uh, he and I worked together over the course of the entire film on preparing the Cole's song, the final song that Cole performs. And It was challenging to make a song out of all the sounds in Cole's life and um, but you know we worked on it uh, for a long time and I think we really got it to a place where um, it, it, it paid off Cole's story. Yeah, that's good. And one last question I think all of you can um, answer. H how does this movie speak to a generation and why will audiences connect with Cole and his friends? We hope that it speaks to a generation. I don't think like any of us want to like say what the messages are of this film, but certainly I think that this is a film that speaks to a post-recession generation that, you know, doesn't have the promise of college as a sort of backbone to success and um, there's a lot of non-traditional ways to find your path. Um, a lot of that being with the new gadgets that we all carry around. Um, there's tons of, like you see in the commercial, the thing about, you know, the creator of Instagram. And I mean, I think DJing is a part of that movement and culture. So it's a coming of age story that's very specific to a certain time and place. And I mean, I think all of us, certainly I experienced that, um, the things that Sophie and Cole do. Um, I think the big messages for me are to, to dig deep, um, you know, be prepared for fear, but but every time you're afraid, it's just another opportunity to rise above. Um, uh, and really sort of listen to yourself, follow your heart, and that can take you in the right direction. Good. Yeah. Anything else to add? Um, I hope it resonates with people because, you know, it was, it was a personal story, um, and and there was a lot of my life that, that I put into it. Um, you know, Cole is striving to be uh, a DJ. I was striving for a long time, but making internet movies in my bedroom at the computer, it looks very similar. And then, you know, once after we wrote the script, we invited the actors in and they really colored in all the details with their own lives and their own experiences. So I think this is a, a real personal film for all of us. And I think we brought our lives into it. And I think and I hope that when you do something like that, uh, it will resonate with, with a greater audience. Great. Awesome.